I already know who the winner is, and the winner is me. Katie Hobbs is, in fact, the winner in the Arizona gubernatorial race. The numbers have just not been there for Carrie Lake. I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. Incredibly low energy. I actually saw people trying to leave. Republicans have now secured a majority in the House of Representatives. We have fired Nancy Pelosi. Kevin McCarthy does not have 218 votes to become speaker. If he becomes speaker, it will be the worst time of his life, and history will not be kind to him. For me, the hours come for a new generation to lead the Democratic caucus. This was the week that saw Republicans narrowly win back the House and Nancy Pelosi step down from Democratic leadership. So as we get ready for a new Congress, where do we go from here? Well, you are in luck. We've got a great Friday nightcap panel here to discuss all of it. My dear friend Stephanie Gosk, NBC News national correspondent, my old friend Bill Cohen, founding partner of Pup News and author of the new book that is a must read, Power Failure, The Rise and Fall of an American Icon, humorous and social media star George Hahn, and Raul Reyes, attorney and member of USA Today's Board of Contributors and an MSNBC Latino contributor. Raul, I turn to you first, Nancy Pelosi. Talk to us about not just her impact, but what Washington will look like without Nancy in leadership. Not as good. I mean, look, <laughs> she, look, look, she, you know, obviously to some, there are people on the right who are thrilled that she's out, out of this job, but she has kept it together. She had her conference in line. She did what John Boehner could not do. She, I mean, the worst scandals that people threw at her were these minor things. When you look at some of the Republicans who preceded her, she, you know, she never went to a vote until she had all those ducks in a row. So I think like this week, you know, hail to the queen because <laughs> She's showing us now. We're not. I don't even think we're going to appreciate her impact until she's gone. Yeah, and you're See, talking about the end of her career, really, the power that she had. But look at the right. arc of her career. She started in Congress when women were lucky to get an invitation to sit in a chair in the mm -hmm. room. She left owning the room. And I think about, you know, remember that when she went down, I, I asked the producers to pull this photo. She went down to the White House. They're fighting over the budget and the wall and shutting down the government. She goes down with Chuck Schumer to, uh, to I don't know if they met in the mm -hmm. Oval Office yep, or yep, what yep. it was. They have a contentious meeting with President Trump, and she comes walking out of there, and she's got this red coat oh, on, yes, black yes. glasses, oh, and, and you know what? She kicked ass, and she took mm -hmm. names, and she looked like it. And I thought, you know, honestly, I don't care if you're Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez or you're Marjorie Taylor Greene. She paved the road to normalize powerful women in Congress. And that's pretty thousand cool. percent. And, and she understood cool. the power of dress. She looked amazing. So the bar is going to get real low in the building when she leaves on that score. <laughs> one, she gave me three or four of my favorite moments in modern political discourse. That moment with Trump across the table. She pointed at him like scolding a child, ripping the uh, address right. up. And then, of course, the tomato red coat. Yes. And there was and a third this one. one. Oh, <laughs> Donnie. But she is leaving with such grace, such mm. dignity, such class. She started, she was a homemaker or something. She was 47 years old when she, she started politics. That's amazing, right? And remember, she's the only person that Donald Trump could not come up with some type of nickname or some no. pejorative no. Uh, name to throw at her because he was scared of her. And that, that yes. picture yes. shows her where he, where, where she's talking to him. Like that. She, she threw leave. down with him. She was not yeah. afraid. And you ask what it's going to be like when she's gone and she is leaving. She, she is leaving a void in what, I don't want to use the other term that some people like to use on this show, but I want to say brass knuckle energy, mm. let's call it. Oh, you were going to say balls. No, BDE. <laughs> oh, BDE. No, we're not going with no. that. No. All right, all right. All right. Brass knuckle energy going. that she had, and not a lot of, we don't see a lot in the Democratic Party. She's an Italian Baltimore girl. Watch out Thank for her. You. Bill Cohen, what we're likely to get over the next two years is gridlock. And while that's not good news for the American people and how they feel about government, getting things done, the twisted thing is it's exactly what Wall Street mm, likes. Yes. Speak Wall, to that. Wall Street loves it. Wall Street votes for it, in fact. They are thrilled that we have gridlock now. And look, if you look back at the three last three administrations, you get your two years. Obama got his two years, six years of gridlock. Trump got his two years, two years of gridlock. Right. Biden's getting his two years, and then either two to four or more years, six years of gridlock. Wall Street loves this. The market has basically gone up since the, uh, the election results are clear. 
The market does not want stability, wants to know that nothing's going to change. And with gridlock, nothing's going to change. So taxes aren't going to go up. You know, the regulations aren't going to increase. You know, it's just going to be status quo. Nothing Wall Street loves better than that. But, Steph, isn't that the opposite of what the American people want? You oh, yeah. go around the country and <laughs> oh, talk yeah. to families that every single day. Time. And this is only going to degrade further trust and faith in government. They want people to govern. And, and you know, what you have here is a message in these midterms, right? It's not the silent majority, it's the silent middle. And they came out and they said, we don't want your extremism on the left, we don't want your extremism on the right, we want something in the middle and we want you guys to get stuff done. Govern, go and govern. But that's not, that but will is, not happen because yeah. I mean, we've already seen it in a few days. You remember what all the Republicans were campaigning on inflation, 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 and all of a sudden, wow, it's Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden. Who yeah, voted for investment? Investigations the, the real, of Hunter Biden. It's just going to be like Benghazi 2.0 with ridiculous investigations, gridlock, and ultimately, I, th I think with this wild conference that the how, that the Republicans have in the House, they're, they, in a sense, I think winning the House may be destructive to them two years from now. I think it's going to be a mess. The real miracle, though, if you really step back from it, was Biden actually getting things done a lot in done. the first two years, given that it was a 50 50 Senate and a razor thin margin for Pelosi mm -hmm. in the House. And nobody he, brags about it. And he got a lot done. Yes. And so. Okay, that was governing. That was yeah. good for the American people. Now we're going to revert a little okay, bit. But America just voted, Stephanie said it, for no more crazy. And then right. what is the GOP doing? Drama Elevating queen. people crazy. like Marjorie Taylor Greene. George, she writes her own jokes. She, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> They're drama queens. The nominees drama for queens. best actors in a melodrama are Jim Jordan, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Who's oh, the other Bobert. idiot from Florida? Oh, Bobert. Don't get me started Stefani. on this. Don't get you started. <laughs> Thank you. But um, drama queens, they like to create drama. This, the Hunter Biden laptop thing is coming up again. Why? You know what I mean? No. Nope. Like they got no. You've got. They've got no plan. None that I've heard of. Where's this health care plan that Trump no, had in his back pocket the whole that's time? That's why. Like, there's no plan, so they have to create it's drama. An infrastructure day. Right. I mean, now they're going to try to impeach Biden. But here's the Enjoy. problem. Here's the Knock general problem. Out, kids. And it's not just Republicans. It's also when you have years now, and we have years of investigations, yeah. and we have people on both sides who feel that they were partisan in nature and that they were wronged. And now you've got a party that's says, okay, well, we're going to do the same thing to you because you did it to us. And that now you get in this tit for tat. And, it, and it's not what the American people want, no. and it's going to be frustrating. Okay, but yeah. investigating Donald Trump and all that he did is totally different from Hunter Biden, who has nothing to do with the I'm government. I'm not equating Thank the you. two things. What I'm saying, however, is the perception, depending on which side of the aisle you are on, is that you are unfairly being investigated, right? And so when you get your opportunity, what are you going to do? We're going right in. But, but We're look, going there is it. a key difference because when we have these investigations, say, of, of Hillary Clinton, she shows up to the hearing. Ah. She sits there for 11 hours. She takes yes, all those question questions like in front of the whole nation and she does her thing <laughs> and she goes home. What we've seen so far with the Republican lawmakers, they, they get a subpoena, they defy it. They blow their nose with it. President Trump, they delay, Donald delay, Trump delay. Does, you know, they go, the fifth, they go back to times. their base and subpoenas are just something to fundraise off of. So I don't even think we can equate the investigation in terms of how they play out because Republicans and Democrats are playing different games. The Republicans have clearly shown they don't respect the process when it's them. Well, so I don't expect to see, uh, uh, you know, re Republicans will launch these committees, but I, th I think that Democrats will show up. We'll see uh, Secretary of Homeland Security in front of Congress. Well, he now you're going to have this special counsel appointed for Trump, but Trump never shows up. I mean, he's wildly successful at running the clock. The law has been going after him for decades, for decades. We've been in New York for decades. Other people have been in New York for decades. We've been watching this show for decades. What has stuck? Oh, wait, let me check. Nothing. You know what I mean? This special counsel. I know everyone says this no. is different. And if I, you know, if I were him, I would be really nervous about the Georgia situation and the documents at the um, gold-plated hotel and resort oh, situation. Oh. Okay, well, how about, about the fact, trial? how about the yeah. fact that he's losing a lot of high-powered support? One of oh, Donald yeah. Trump's favorite things while in office was finally finally being surrounded by rich, rich New Yorkers, like Steve Schwartzman, like a Ron Lauder, like a Ken Griffin, Ken Griffin. from Citadel, all who drop kicked him this week. What's your take on that? I mean, 
thank goodness they've gotten their mind around something they should have gotten their mind around uh, a decade ago. But finally, they've come to their senses, and that is going to hurt Donald Trump, I think, because, you know, once Steve Schwartzman says, okay, you have my permission to no longer support this guy, I think a lot of rich, wealthy Republicans are going to do the same thing. He tried forever. He pressed, he had his nose pressed against the glass he, he of would the like rich to be, New York elites, and he wanted to be in. He wanted to be the front page of the New York Times. He never got he access was. to that, for the wrong reasons, <laughs> but he never got access to that crowd. And then once he was in power, oh, suddenly they want his number. They suddenly sure they want to hang out at that you No, know, he, wanted, he wanted that legitimacy that he never exactly. got. Exactly. You and know what? The I'm proximity sorry. to power gave him that. It, it, that is, was still, it is still yeah. disturbing that yeah. this special counsel, I mean, what this is to me is just a total abdication hmm. of, of, of duty by the Department of Justice because they've had this for two years. And for, them, for Merrick Garland to turn this over now to a special counsel to avoid the appearance of impropriety, does he think there's anyone uh, on, the, on the right that's going to th say that, oh, with this special counsel, we'll accept the results or that Donald Trump will not immediately go into a combative mode with this person? It shows that his delay tactics are, are working.